Okay, so the second speaker is Amir Tabatabai, um, and he will speak on mining the surface, proof mining in the bounded world. That's a change of title. Yeah. So first let me say something about the title, so I changed it. So the content is the same, uh, but it's somehow more catchy, and maybe uh, capturing what I, what, what I want to say more faithfully. So, what I want to say is not just proof mining of boundaries, this is a technique that works there also. So, here I, I want to capture bounded statements in uh, strong theories of arithmetic, like PA, PA plus transfinite induction, something like that. So, let's begin by a problem. So, assume that you have a sentence A, arithmetical sentence, pi 0, 1, and a theory, again arithmetical, and you want to show that A is unprovable in T, assuming, obviously, that A is really uh, unprovable in T. So, there are some methods for that. So, first we can use, for instance, the second incompleteness theorem. We can show that your A is reducible to consistency of T, and therefore, obviously, A is Unproven. We have also some other things like using propositional proof complexes. So the thing is that if you have a theory, if your T is a theory of bounded arithmetic, then usually for any T we have some propositional system PT, such that if you have some statement, pi 0, 1 statement, which is provable in A, then you can turn it to a sequence of propositional tautologies such that if A is provable, then the sequence has a short proof. Therefore, if you prove a super polynomial lower bound for PT, it leads to unprovability of A in T. One instance of this method is proving that pigeonhole principle is unprovable in I delta 0 R or in the second order parameter. But I would say that there is no general method to do the thing. There is no general method to prove that we have an independent pi 0, 1 statement. Yes, we have the things that I mentioned. Yes, we have some kind of force things related to complexity theory. But compare the situation to pi 0, 2, for instance. For pi 0, 2, you have uh, a characterization of all pi 0, 2 provable statements based on probable recursive functions. So you have the growth rate bounded by the proof theoretic ordinal, and therefore you have the characterization, which means that if you want to prove some, that something is unprovable, pi zero to statement, it is enough just to show that it de defines some function with a huge growth rate. The reason why the pi zero one case is extremely complex is, I think, First, that I, pi zero one is not just a level in a hierarchy, it is really a hierarchy itself. So, based on the alternation of bonds, you have a hierarchy there. And if you ignore, if you count some bonds, ignoring some other bonds, some less harmful bonds, then you have the hierarchy. But you can count again the other kind of bonds. So you, you, you can change your bonds and give a hierarchy inside the hierarchy inside the hierarchy. So it is a huge complex thing. This is the first reason. The second reason is that almost always everything related to these bounded statements is related to complexity theory and we know that we are hopeless there. So for that reason, now I want to narrow down the problem, the problem of proving independence of pi zero one statement in the theory T to a very narrow uh, fragment. The fragment of total MP search prop. So P is a P time. So from now on, assume that your theory has enough predicates for any P time completable predicate. And then define A as for any x. There exists Y bounded in length by a polynomial in x. E, X, and Y. So this is a total NP search problem because there exists Y 
uh, b is something np, and it is total because for any x you have one y. Okay? And the complexity of the whole thing is pi 0 y, because your y is 1 in the, in the usual sense of arithmetic. So I want to narrow down the problem to this kind of statements. And now we know that the gross rate thing does not work. OK, so that, that statement A is pi 0, 1. But you can think of that as pi 0, 2, because it is for all there exists. But we cannot use the gross rate thing, because the gross rate is already bounded. So maybe. When the height does not work, maybe the width works. What does it mean when I'm saying something like width of a function? I mean the complexity of the computation of the function. So maybe the function is bounded, it is not very high, so the theory can grasp the bound, but it is extremely complex and the theory cannot compute, cannot see the determination of the computation somehow. So, for instance, there is a very trivial good force algorithm to find y. Just check all of them, and you can find it. This is the brute force algorithm. The soundness of the algorithm is based on just the fact that a is true, because we know that for any x there is one, we can find it by brute force. And now the question is that we know a t proof of that guy, because we are assuming that it is provable. And then we want to know that can we extract something from the proof? So following Kreise, I'm saying that does a T proof of A, of that form, lead to a more clever, clever algorithm than the blind brute force? Is it possible to measure this sort of cleverness by ordinals like what we had uh, uh, for gross rate, for instance? The answer is yes, and this is the informal version of the main theorem that I want to explain. So, it says that if you have something like this, then it, and, you, and you have a theory with a proof theoretic ordinal alpha, and from now on, I think that alpha is epsilon type, so it's closed under beta to omega to the beta, and these two are equivalent. So, your MP series problem is probability. It is equivalent to the existence of beta less than alpha and the sequence of lens beta of polytime verifiable computational steps beginning with zero, ending with the answer that you want. So this is an algorithm extracted from the proof. It says that you can find your y if you begin with zero and do one step, one polytime verifiable computational step again and again and again, beta times, quote and quote, to find the answer. Okay. So, the point is that the usual brute force algorithm that I have mentioned is like the, the thing that now I'm talking about. So, the brute force algorithm che checks all of the numbers. It checks 0, 1, 2, up to <coughs> 2 to the p of the length of x. So, and every step you check just b. You check that b is true or not. And again, and again, and again. So it seems that you are doing something polytime, polytime verifiable in some sense, and just finitely many steps, far less than the infinite ordinal that I mentioned. So it, it, in some sense, this kind of algorithm is less clever than the brute force because it takes too much time and the usual obvious algorithm is just uh, shorter. The point is that uh, in, in, in the point is the polytime poly 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 verifiability. So a step is called polytime verifiable if first it represents something computable in polynomial time. And it should be, the, the soundness of the thing should be also provable by a polytime reasoning. By polytime reasoning, I mean it should be provable in PV, and, and PV is something like PRA, but for polytime computable functions. 
So for instance, check the, the, the brute force algorithm. It is not uh, polytime verifiable in that sense. So the algorithm is that you check any y again and again and again and again till you find your answer and then keep in mind till the end and at the end answer it, return it as the y that you want. So it seems that everything is polytime, but I would say that that uh, all the steps are not polytime verifiable. The last step is not polytime verifiable. Why? Because assume that you reach the last step, you have your y, and you want to return the y as the answer for the p. Okay? So, this step is not verifiable in pb. Why? Because how do you know that the y works? You know because you know that you found y throughout the day. So you know the existence of y. And now you are using the existence of y. So therefore, if it is <coughs> polytime verifiable, it means that it should be the existence of as well. Uh, the existence should be provable in the theory PV, which is not the case most of, most of the time. So, so OK. So therefore, I would say that this, alg this algorithm that I mentioned here is not less clever. It is longer, yes, but every step is understandable for someone who thinks everything is polytime computable. Every step is polytime computable, and also the soundness is provable in polynomial time. Okay? Uh, polynomial time reason. So now let me explain the formalization of the main theorem because it was informal, a sequence, beta sequence of polytime verifiable steps. So first I need some kind of polytime ordinal representation, obviously, because I, I want to work with ordinals. So this is the representation. It says that assume that you have a structure like this, 1a, the order plus times minus division 0 and 1 and everything should be polytime, such that this guy is uh, isomorphic to the ordinal itself, to here. So you have the ordinal, the order on ordinal, plus on ordinal parts, and minus and division means minus and division from right, because from left we do not have the thing. It's not really defined. So the second thing is that, obviously, we want PV to prove something about our representation, something very modest, so something like that the, the, that the order is order, it uh, respects addition, multiplication, in, in a natural sense, something like that. And the last one is that PRA should prove that this representation is equivalent to the usual representation that we are using in order analysis. This is just some some technical thing. I, I, I don't want to do the ordinal analysis of a theory again on the polynomial polytime level. So this is just a technical thing. So this is the definition of the ordinal. Now define the class 4 of 1 as the class of all universal formulas. Just the usual universal formulas, but the point is that we have polytime atomic formulas, nothing else. So you have polytime p-time atom and or implication in a, in a good way and then uh, universal. So if you have two statements, A and B, uh, from that class, then I want to define an alpha flow from A to B. And, uh, and an alpha flow is just a pair of, F, of one's uh, formula H in for all one again and beta less than alpha, such that we have the following. So the first says, okay, h is the steps. So h0 says that it is just a. h beta is b. And in each step, you can reach the level delta by everything behind it. Okay? So this is more or less what it says. It says that you have a formula, h of 0 captures your a, at the end it captures b, and in between, when you want to prove h of something, the usual uh, 
induction hypothesis for ordinal induction, you have if you have everything B, below alpha, then you have below delta, then you have the, the thing for delta. So this is actually a sequence, it's a flow of information in some sense, beginning with A, ending with A. And then, so we define this notion and we show it, we show it by this notation. It says that there, this notation says that there exists a flow, there exists H and beta such that, such that so and so. So this is the existence of a flow, and then we have a calculus for this notion of flow. This calculus is more or less just like the usual Gensen type calculus, but now for implication we have just uh, that. Triangle to, to say that you can admit all the Gensen rules here using the, 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 the flow interpretation. So, for instance, it says that if you can reach delta by an ordinal length thing from gamma and A, and then you, you can have gamma and A and B to delta. So, uh, and it's not that hard to prove. This thing. So, mm, and you have the inductions there also, so maybe this is the most important part. It says that if you reach delta from, from below, then it means that you have it for any beta less than alpha, obviously. So, this is then the main theorem uh, written in the formal way. It says that if you have a theory of arithmetic and alpha be its proof theoretic ordinal, represented by some polytime representation, then T proves gamma implies delta if and only if there exists a flow from gamma to delta. Okay? So more or less the theory the theorem says that you can reduce the use of induction to just one induction, and your work, that one induction is in the form that uh, the induction hypothesis part uh, is probably P. So this is it. How to prove it? The completeness part is, e is easy. So the completeness part says that if there is a flow, then you have that. Because if you have a flow, then it means, it means what it means? that you have these conditions, <coughs> so we have P, B, and T, so all of them are provable in T, so based on the middle thing, you have full induction, since you have full induction, then it means that you have H0 implies H beta by induction, and therefore A implies B. But the other part, the soundness part, which says that if we have a proof there, then we can extract that kind of thing from it, the flow from it. It's the, the, the description of the proof says that first use continuous cut elimination to go from T to this theory, PRA plus this kind of transfinite induction, the usual thing. Then kill the effect of PRA, so represent any polytime complete any primitive recursive function by four of polytime, again nothing special, and then at last you have a proof in a system with transfinite induction and the language is just polytime. So witness the proof in the sense that use the induction on the lens of the proof in that system to show that if you have this, then you have that, and for that thing use this lemma of the behavior. So, the only thing that you have to check is that the triangle respects the proof, and that's it. So, the main theorem, the second form, it says that if you, you have A as a total in research problem, and T, uh, these two are equivalent, A is provable in T, and the second is Something that so it it it's very I'm sorry, sorry so you can change 
the, the condition of a flow to change this theorem, which says that probability is equivalent to the existence of a flow, to the existence of such a thing. How? First, let me explain what it means. So, so it, it says that there exists beta less than alpha such that we have some polytime computable functions, f, g, and h, and polytime predicate g, such that this. So, read g as z is your possible witness in the level u. So u is an ordinal, z is the, the thing that you want to find. So, then this guy says that at the level beta, z is acceptable as a witness. Then, you have a function which sends gamma to something less than gamma. And you know that if z works for gamma, then f, the new thing, works for the level behind. And at last, it's, ob it's obvious that if you repeat it again and again, then you reach zero. When you reach zero, and you have your z now, then you can change your z by h such that it would be an answer to your problem. This is the y that we wanted to find. Okay? This is the algorithm that I explained informally at the beginning. So how to prove this from the main theorem that I mentioned, the existence of a flow? So it is pretty obvious. So first you know that that thing is provable in T, because T proves the existence of Y bounded such that B. And then by the flow thing you know that there exists a flow from the first part for all uh, bounded negation B to bot. So therefore you have a flow which says that you have H, H0 is equivalent to the first part, H uh, the theta, which is some ordinal less than alpha, is equivalent to bot, and you have the middle thing. Okay? All of them provable in PV. So now we know that H is in the form, in, in the universal form, so therefore without loss of generality I would assume that it is in the form for all z k u z and k is per theta and predicate. So if you put that formula there and use some Herbert's type, Herbert's type argument to extract some uh, witness functions for 1, 2, and 3, then you will find this thing. So the whole point is that you have one uh, you have one quantifier here, one for all quantifier here, and one for all there. So witness this guy by this guy, and you have one for all here, one for all here, so witness this guy by this guy, and the same here. And since it is probable in theory, you can witness everything by polytime computable functions. So then at last, if you change something a little bit, you will have these things. And it is enough just to put beta as theta plus 1 and g as negation of k to prove this thing. So I would say that this is just the equivalent to the existence of a flow using some witnessing. Uh, argument. So, um, so this is the main theorem, a formal version, and this is the, the algorithm, the, the um, smart algorithm that you can extract from T. And then you can apply it to investigate NP search problems in strong theories. For instance, you have PA. And you can ask, okay, A is provable in PA, A is some NP search problem, then what kind of algorithm we can extract from a PA proof of A? This is the algorithm. So there exists a function, a polygon function, that you can iterate in some hash of sense. Everything, every step is provable in PV, so polytime reasonable in some sense. And the ordinal that you have to iterate everything should be less than epsilon naught. The same also works for uh, this theory. 
Pa plus transfinite induction up to some alpha, and alpha is closed under this operation. Again, we have the same thing, but the, the length of a thing is some ordinal. So, is it something specific in this argument related to polytonic computable functions? No. So you can use any reasonable uh, class, I would say. The, the whole point is that you have to you have to have enough power to formalize things. Polytonic is perfect for that. Everything beyond that is again perfect. This is the first thing. The second thing is that you, you can just somehow steal the ordinal analysis. So there is no reason to do again the ordinal analysis based on polytonic computable functions. So if you prove it in the usual sense, then uh, then you can use this representation and continuous path elimination together to change it to polytonic version. The whole point is that you have to find some good natural uh, polytonic representation for ordinals. And I guess Arnold showed uh, <coughs> some, I guess that there exists some uh, natural polytonic representations of ordinals up to gamma numbers. So therefore, we have this thing, and then using the technique that I explained, we can extract what we want. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for this last talk. Um, I, I think that theory you mean a theory over PRA. Uh, so Yes, the language is arithmetical, so the, the intended model is just a natural number. But about the language, so it can be just, yes, it, it can be something beyond uh, a sigma 1 in, in, in terms of language and in terms of power, for instance. How about people? Can you go now? Oh, yes, but, but not with this method. So. Because we know as sigma of one, I would say that we are in the world of bounded arithmetic. So in bounded arithmetic, you, you do not have that reasonable ordinal analysis, possibly never. So you, you have to do something else. The, the idea of flow again works there, but you have to change the ordinal as a lens to some term, and again, then again you can do these things in some sense. Everything would be more hard, I would say. But yes, you, you can capture NP search problems, for instance, there. There, there is already the, the characterization by Sam, and, by Sam and Arnold and also me and the others. So, but but it, it's possible to reprove it and find something else. Uh, and for I sigma n, I would say that it is also possible to do the same thing. So there is no read, there is no need to assume that alpha is closed under the operation omega to the something. So, uh, but it would be somehow hard to keep track of changing everything at the, uh, of the levels and so. So just, just for the simplicity, I pick this thing. Can you apply this technique to show that the consistency of PA is not provable in PA by showing that it cannot be verified by a flow that is shorter than epsilon or not, or something like that? Uh, it's a very good question. The short answer is no, uh, but the explanation is that uh, the honest thing is that, yes, it is a characterization of NP search problems, but it is not that easy to show that we do not have a flow like that from something to something else. So it's not that easy to use it for independence, I would say, but, but that would be a good uh, start to check that is it possible to extend it or not? Well, can I see slide number 11? Slide number 11, yeah, sure. This is the question. I wrote it down somewhere. Maybe it's 12. <laughs> and this is 12. Um, 
So there was something you, you brought, so if you have an ordinal analysis, then you get it down to a PRA plus. Um, ah, so yes, it is a year. Or is it that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this, uh, this you can always do if you have an ordinal analysis. So then, then the next step is. The next step is so interpreting, so cheating on primitive recursion. Yeah, but you say here, you say you just transpire that induction on formulas. You mean transpire induction along the same alpha, or the same for the same, the same uh, yes. initial parts. Exactly. Of alpha. Okay. So, um, and then you still have, but you still have induction over transpire induction over um, pi zero one formulas. The universe alone, yes, but. Yeah. So, how do you get. I mean, uh, what, what's the challenge here? And how do you get rid of the. Um, of the current recursive function or the elementary functions? How, how do you do it? So, assume that. Okay, the, the point is that we can in reinterpret PRA in a theory with 4 on 1 induction, just the usual induction, uh, and the language is polytonic. So the point is that you assume that you have it, you have an atomic formula in the language of PRA. So you have some symbols, uh, function symbols, and they go out. So it's up pretty obvious that you can write it as a universal or for or on one and then something polytonic. And that that one thing is just the computation of everything. And, and you need to say that your computation is consistent, which is a polytonic computable thing. And after that, since you have enough induction, then we can get. So there are some things to check, but it's not that hard. Given the time and everyone is thirsty for coffee, I think we stop here and we discuss the break. <laughs>